Should we stop supplementing niacin? Everyone is asking me because of this new study that says metabolite of niacin promotes vascular inflammation and contributes to cardiovascular disease risk, which sounds like niacin is triggering heart attacks. So what they did in this study is take stable cardiac patients, meaning people that already have heart disease and have had heart attacks, they call them the discovery cohort, and they compared those heart diseased people to a group of people with no history of heart disease called a validation cohort, and they compared their blood looking at literally thousands of different metabolites using several databases like KEGG KEG, which has about 20,000 metabolites, for example. And metabolites, in case you don't know, they're breakdown products of various nutrients, vitamins, prescription drugs, plastic pollutants, heavy metals, anything your body is exposed to, and anything floating around in your blood. That's metabolites. So what did they find when they compared the metabolites of people with heart disease to people without heart disease? Well, the people with heart disease have differences in niacin metabolites. One is called 2PY and the other is 4PY. And as always, what seems to happen, they also found genetic differences in certain people that amplified issues. It was a SNP with the reference SNP code or RS code name, RS1049673131. So this further validates that people need to look at genetics when you want to give advice about the best supplements and the best diet for each individual rather than lumping everyone together. But here's the thing about this study that you're not going to see in the headlines. Niacin is a vitamin. It's a necessary nutrient. It's not causing heart disease. We usually call it vitamin B3. But like most vitamins, there's synthetic versions and natural versions. I'm doing a whole series on vitamins on my channel, so I suggest you look out for these videos as they come out. I'm doing one on animal versus plant iodine, like the stuff found in fish tissues, for example. Animal versus plant iron, the stuff found in red meat, uh, like the meat in your own body. Animal versus plant omega fatty acids, zinc, calcium, potassium, vitamin K, others. Super interesting story. Vitamin K, for example, for a quick teaser, uh, did you know plants have K1, but animals have K2? So if you had to guess which one is more available to your body, the plant form or the animal form, which one would you guess? Similar to vitamin A, the plant version is vitamin A is called carotene, named after carrots. The animal version is vi of vitamin A is called retinol. That's the version your body needs. They're both marketed as vitamin A, but there's vast differences, especially if you look at people's BCO1 gene for the vitamin A. Anyway, the idea that plants are so full of vitamins is a bit deceptive in certain aspects. But it goes even beyond that. Supplement companies often go a step further and make totally synthetic, fake petroleum-based versions of vitamins, like folic acid, for example. In fact, I'm doing an entire B vitamin video specifically focusing on B vitamins like folic acid, which is, they call it B9, but B2 is different, B3 is different, B12 is different, and how distinctly different all of those are, I'm doing a video on animal versus plant versions and synthetic versions of these vitamins. So that brings us a full circle back to B3, niacin. B3, niacin, comes in a few forms, but I want to highlight the animal form, nicotinamide, and the plant form, nicotinic acid. These are both called niacin by supplement companies, but they're definitely different. Also, I just now popped on Amazon and typed in niacin and this nature's bounty, a Nestle owned company, by the way, it popped up as number one. It's the number one hit with inositol hexa nicotinate, which isn't plant or animal. It's synthetic man-made shelf stable compound. It's a fake compound, but we're calling it niacin. Anyway, the point here is there's a wide array of types of niacin and what weird metabolites are created from the man vein versions versus from the supplements versus the plant-based versions, the animal-based versions. This wasn't differentiated in the study, but it would be a good idea to follow up, especially since people with heart disease are often told to take niacin. It's heart healthy because it quote unquote improves good cholesterol if there truly is such a thing as good and bad cholesterol. Uh, as illustrated here by the illustrious Mayo Clinic where I used to work until they started forcing people to get vaccinated. But the point is, people with heart disease are probably taking excess or at least higher amounts of synthetic niacin uh, that a validation cohort or people that didn't have heart disease wouldn't be taking. 
That's probably the major finding in this study. Synthetic versions of niacin are problematic for people with certain genetic SNPs, similar to how synthetic versions of folic acid are problematic for people that have in the MTHFR gene. Yet you find them in all the cheap prenatal vitamins. It's a problem. If you're eating foods high in B3 niacin, you're good here. There's nothing to worry about, especially if you're focusing on eating meats of all types, because meats not only have the natural form of niacin, they also have at least 10 times more tryptophan compared to plants, which your body can use to make more niacin. Tryptophan is a niacin precursor. It's a B3 precursor. Uh, the last thing I have to say about this study is statins are a factor. We can't ignore that. They don't say it in this study, but I'll bet a lot of money that the discovery cohort, which is 1,162 people with previous heart, heart attacks, those people are mostly on statins, probably close to 90 to 100% of them. While the group of people that are they're compared to, the validation cohort with 974 people with no history of heart disease, they're probably, only a tiny fraction of them are probably on statins. And how do statins screw up the metabolism of B3 and niacin? I don't know, but this study may be suggesting that statins screw up the niacin metabolism. That that may be the only real finding the study shows, but we don't know that for a few years probably still. And statins are mentioned in the body of the study. They say therapeutic niacin, high doses, high, high doses of probably synthetic B3, was one of the pharma agents, again, synthetic stuff, used for treatment of high cholesterol. However, its efficacy for cardiovascular disease risk reduction in the modern statin era <laughs> wow, has been questioned. Recent clinical trials have shown that although niacin can reduce cholesterol in the setting of combined high statin therapy, niacin not only failed to diminish cardiovascular risk, it all even heightened overall mortality. It increased death. Moral of the story, eat healthy meat, not processed or fortified meats or fortified foods in general, and don't take niacin if you're on statins. Oh, and just avoid synthetic forms of niacin in general.